can not come to the rescue. We don't want to over milk a milking cow. The situation now does not ask for a in increased personal taxation. Not now. But uh, it's not just an increase, but uh, people are not paying. The people are supposed to Well, pay. then you, ca you catch those that are not paying, <laughs> but not don't increase the taxation, but uh, put into the, within the net those that are outside the net. Yes, indeed, you are tuned to tax matters. And the speaker there needs no introduction. So what's our advice? Fasten your seat belts and get ready for 25 minutes jolly ride into the world of taxation in Nigeria full of excitement, full of enlightenment and education on taxation. My name is Olumuiwa Matuloko, and with me on the episode today is Radiant Christina. Hello, viewers. How's all we been? Regular viewers of Tax Matters will readily recall that we've spent the last few episodes of the program as platforms for the contribution of our own quota to the discussion as to how to get Nigeria out of the dire economic straits in which she currently finds herself. How do we, for example, garner more resources? How do we get more revenue to flow into the coffers of government at all levels? Can taxation come to the rescue? From the 27th to the 28th of September 2016, the Federal Minister of Finance brought together men and women who called the shots in the area of finance accountant generals, commissioners for finance, commissioners responsible for budget and planning, legislators led by the chairman of the Senate and House of Representatives Committees on Finance, the executive chairman of the Federal Land Revenue Service, the controller general of customs, and many more. Of course, all led by the Federal Minister of Finance. The conference, the two-day conference was tagged NACOFED, National Council on Finance and Economic Development. The theme was enhancing revenue generation and obtaining best value for money in expenditure. But before we bring you the story of NACOFED, let's fill you in on happenings in the world of Tazion in Nigeria in the last few weeks. The Lagos district of the CITN has a new chairman. At an investiture ceremony that took place at the imposing tax professionals house of the CITN in Lagos, Mrs. Oluwato Campbell was installed as the 15th chairman of the Lagos district society of the CITN. The event took place on Saturday the 17th of September 2016. The following Friday, 23rd of September 2016, the Tax Club of the University of Lagos brought together university undergraduates from all over the country for the third edition of the National Tax Debate. The following day, Saturday 24th of September, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria CITN hosted the second in the series of its David Ajibola Olorunleke birthday lecture. Chief David Ajibola Olorunleke, the honoree, turned 78 on that day. By the way, Chief Olon Leke is generally regarded as the doyen of the taxation profession in Nigeria, having served as the pioneer president of the CITN from 1985 to 1995. Of course, Chief Olon Leke was also the chairman of the then Federal Board of Inland Revenue from 1978 to 1992. The birthday lecture was delivered by Dr. Mark Abani. These stories will come to you in fuller details, one after the other, in subsequent episodes of Tax Matters. VAT, Value Added Tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Welcome back. Now to our story on NACOFED. The National Council on Finance and Economic Development was held in Abe Okuta, the capital of Ogun State, from the 27th to the 28th of September 2016. 
NACOFED 2016 was graced by the esteemed presence of two-time head of state, Chief Olusegun Gobasanjo, the Federal Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adioshun, host governor, Senator Ebikunle Amosun, and the governor of Gombe State, Alaji Ibrahim Dankwabo. In a welcome address, the Federal Minister of Finance, Mrs. Adioshun, gave a brief background of NACOFED. The National Council on Finance and Economic Development was actually established at the Federation Account Allocation Committee held in 1992 in Jos Plateau State. And it is a preeminent gathering of public finance managers from all the three tiers of government to a national debate on the economy and its direction. NACOFED uniquely combines the Federal Ministry of Finance, the Commissioners of Finance and Budget and Planning from the 36 states, and the FCT, our key revenue generating agencies, including the FIRS, Customs, NMPC, the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, all under one roof, as well as wider stakeholders from the private sector. On the new direction of the Federal Accounts and Allocation Committee, Nigeria is a confederation of states and this confederation is predicated on the whole being greater than the sum of the parts and in this regard I'm looking forward to a new narrative behind the federation account it can no longer be a gathering to share revenues but rather to share ideas share best practice share opportunities and share attainments that will ensure that each state operates as an independent revenue generating center thank you that is creating development based on its local endowments nigeria's economic economic recovery of which we are extremely confident is not going to be a top-down recovery it will be a bottom-up recovery it will be driven from deep within our 774 local government areas it will percolate up to our 36 states and will combine into our common nigeria Host Governor, Governor of Ogu State, Senator Ebikunle Amosun, and his Gombe State counterpart, Alaji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwabo, were on hand to lend support to the Federal Minister of Finance. You know, I know what we were all facing at home. These challenges are not unique to Nigeria. These challenges have been faced globally. How we get out of these challenges is what we expect you people to discuss in the next few days. Like she said, we expect this one to be bottom up, that these reforms to come up from the local government to the state and to the federal government. Like constitutionally provided, it's one nation, it's one economy. Government alone cannot finance the development agenda, especially based on revenue from the federation account. This simply means that we must find a way of making our people to support our initiatives and ideas. We find out that our people will readily and willingly support government by paying their taxes as and when due, once they are convinced about the genuineness of government and clear evidence of what their taxes will be spent on. Two-time head of state and worthy citizen of Ogu State, Chief Olusha Gomba Sanjo, was father of the day, and he declared the two-day conference open on the present state of the economy? For me, the situation we have found ourselves is we are spending more than we are earning. Pure and simple. And we have not got cushion. We haven't saved enough to be able to take and go back and take money from what we have saved to buy up. Pure and simple. It is the same in individual finances. If you are spending more than you are earning, there are only three solutions. One, you spend less. Two, you earn more. Three, you borrow. In the hope that you will be able to pay back. For us, we have to do the three. As quickly as possible, we must borrow. And we must go to people who will give us that money at reasonable, uh, on reasonable terms. And there are friends with whom we can do that. 
with all due respect, if we want to do that with the World Bank, <coughs> if we want to do it with IMF, <coughs> I don't say... <coughs> the issue of uh, animal, yes, oil, we are not in control of the price of oil. We are not. And we can only pray that those who are in control will do what is right so that the price will continue to go up. But what we are in control of it's not what we can get overnight. We are in control of agricultural production. It takes time. Not only does it take time, it also takes the right policy. If we give it out in one hand and we take back in another, then we are going to get there. NACOFED featured presentations from the Minister of Mines and Steel Development and the Controller General of Customs. Mineral assets abound in all the 36 states of the Federation. At least we've identified 44 non-mineral assets. We're taking a memo to Council on the management of revenue generation and revenue sharing on mineral resources. Of course, you all know that all states are now entitled to 13% derivation on minerals as well. Most states may say they're not aware, but the 13% derivation that applies to oil and gas also applies to solid minerals. We notice that there's a lot of under-declaration in mining, both at the state level and at the federal level, particularly quarries. I go around, I see uh, loads of quarry products, aggregates that are hardly not paid for. So we clearly are not making as much as we should be making from mining. That's one challenge that we have in revenue generation. Another challenge which I've had to discuss with Cornell, uh, uh, Cornell Amidali and, and his own team too, is that we don't have sufficient knowledge, both in our customs and our uh, other institutions of these minerals. And that's partly our fault. We really need to sit down with the institutions that are responsible for revenue generation to train them as well in knowledge of these minerals. At least maybe a specialized section of, of customs needs to have that knowledge. People take lead and zinc out of this country. Just to give one example, in bulk, and when they take lead and zinc out, it's very difficult for a custom officer who they say, well, what are you taking out? Lead. Most geologists and scientists will know that lead does not come alone. Lead comes with silver, it comes with other uh, minerals that are much more expensive than the lead itself. So when he takes it out, custom cannot determine. <laughs> which is which, take it out, we lose money as government. Even the person who is exporting loses money because he doesn't get full value for what he's exporting. And that is why for us, we have now said beneficiation locally, value addition is going to be a key part of what we would do. And we've not fully worked this out, but when we do, we also sit down with custom at some point, we will not let certain raw minerals be taken out of the country unless value has been added, and we can see precisely what it is that we are getting out of it. That way, we'll make more money, because when you are taking lead through a smelter, you can separate the silver, you can separate the zinc, you can separate the lead, and you earn more money. Raw lead is $200 per ton. But lead that has been processed is $1,800 per ton. Preceding 1st January 2009, the service in line with the rules governing exercise duty has been generating substantial annual exercise revenue for 118 years. 
In the year 2000 to 2008, the service generated 182 billion, 247 million, 529,673.90 naira from excise duty. On 1st January 2009, however, a fiscal policy review measure came into effect, removing substantial number of items from payment of excise duty. The policy restricted payment of excise duties and non-excisable to only breweries, tobacco and cigarette, and other alcoholic industries. Consequently, excise duty payment is currently limited to locally manufactured beer, stout, tobacco products, gin, and other alcoholic beverages. The introduction of this policy has drastically affected the, the revenue generated from excise duty. Consequent upon this, the revenue generated from excise duty from January 2009 to August 2016 is 281,123,897,000 billion, 123 million, 897 159,35 Colonel Ali thereafter called for a return of the de excise goods to the list of goods subject to excise duties. The 2009 fiscal policy which de exercise some products and industries was aimed at stimulating economy against the backdrop of global economic recession, effective 1st January 2009. As mentioned earlier, the policy dealt a severe blow to excise revenue and the situation has remained so till date. Whatever was the intention of government at the time, no list to boost and strengthen domestic industries in Kabni argue that seven years is enough period of tax relief for the industries to stabilize. More so, in this time of recession, government must review all incentives and consensual in order to generate enough funds to run its operation. And of course, the demand, demand, at least from my own perspective, taxation. It's a new dawn in Nigeria, and the mantra is change. The wind of change is blowing all over Nigeria and beckons to you. One sure way to respond is to perform your civic duty, pay your tax. With taxes, government generates revenue to fulfill its electoral promises, and your regular power supply provide good security, standard education, medical care, true total change. Individuals and corporations enjoy specific benefits, rights and privileges for paying taxes and avoid the consequences and penalties of not paying. Oil revenue is no longer sufficient to bring desired change, but your tax can. It pays to pay your tax. A message from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. For Nigeria to work, you need a leader with a vision, and that vision has to be funded with money, or it remains a dream. We're lucky that we do have leaders with visions, and now it's our part to play our own roles by providing the much-required finances. Basically, if a country is going to be funded, you can either do it through borrowing, or through taxation. And like we heard today from Baba, and I think what he said, I agree with him. When the World Bank offers you money, or the IMF offers you money, they offer you money with conditions. And most of the time, I don't honestly think they really understand a particular situation. So basically, I think the option for us is to look inward and to fund our country through taxation. We can't say we love Nigeria and we don't pay our taxes. We have tried as much as possible to tell taxpayers it might be inconvenient, but when you're assessed or told to pay a tax that you don't understand or disagree with, don't pay. And in the Joint Tax Board, we and the State Chairman have agreed that anybody who has a complaint wants they put through a call, will come to their aid, of course, free of charge, to sort out the issue. But I think we as Nigerians always believe that it's better just to settle. And I think we have to send that message out today that we will no longer settle. Enough is enough. Mr. Fowler's presentation will form the major part of the next episode of Tax Matters. A few minutes ago, we shared with you 
the presentation of Colonel Amid Ali, the Controller General of Customs. In his closing remarks at the presentation, Colonel Ali made a case for the rich to pay adequate taxes. There are nations that depend on tax. And what I have in the course of doing my own business this past one year, I have discovered that the top rich people in this country don't pay tax. They don't want to pay tax and they don't pay tax. And they get away with virtually everything. The big companies don't want to pay their dues. We have a running battle with many of them to pay just their duties for imports of items they use in their own industries. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot build a nation on that state. We must begin to look inwards, especially today that we're looking for every available money to be able to sustain government and run this country. There are a lot of us that do not see tax as an obligation. In countries like the United States, that is the biggest offense you will commit, not to pay your tax. But in this country, we run around, beating our chests as the richest people, but we don't beat, meet our obligations to the state, and we want the best of everything. It cannot happen. I therefore would want to crave the indulgence of this forum to look critically at all taxes that are collectible. At this stage, I would not advocate individual tax, but gradually we should get there. And why did I say that? In all honesty, most of us, most of us do not attach our sentiments to government expenditures because we don't part with our own money. When politicians go home, people look at them as people who should bring money. I believe that when we get to a stage where every individual is asked to part with some money as due to the state, all our local government chairmen, all our governors, all our honorable uh, members will begin to know how to spend their money because the moment you start wasting money, somebody will come at you asking you where did you find it because now he knows that the 200 naira that he's being forced to pay annually might be part of that expenditure and therefore begin to hold our own leaders accountable to what they do. And unless we do that, the ordinary man do not see the connection between him and the Federation account and that money that is collected on his behalf every month of the year. Food for thought. Now, how does the Federal Inland Revenue Service and indeed all the taxing authorities across the country intend to go about taxing the rich? Uh, in this uh, quest for higher revenue for government, what strategies are being put in place to get the rich to pay now that we know that we need more money? What are the strategies in place? Well, it's not so much the fact that we need more money. It's the fact that people should do the right thing, should obey the law. For the high net worth, we're going to prosecute them. And when I say prosecute them, even for companies that they run as chairman or CEO, where they're not remitting government revenue, be it VAT or CIT, apart from shutting the company, we'll prosecute them in their personal capacities. Now, when people talk about raising more revenue, all hands are pointing towards uh, the big buildings in Asokoro, in Mitama, in Victoria Island, in Lagos. Anything about property tax in the pipeline? Well, different states have got different laws when it comes to property tax. Um, Lagos, for example, have what you call the land use charge. The FCT has its own property tax. So it depends on the laws passed by those various states. Um, if there is a law in place, then they're entitled to charge for that tax. But what you're referring to um, about the large properties, some of these properties are, are built in company names that have not paid any taxes. So we do have provisions in our law that we can use a best of judgment based on turnover. Mm -hmm. And we will do a valuation of those properties and we will charge taxes on those properties. Watch out, the sheriff is in town.
tax matters also saw the opinion of former head of state, President Olusha Gwamba Sanjo. Can Tanzania come to the rescue? We don't want to over milk a milking cow. The situation now does not ask for a in increased personal taxation, not now. But uh, it's not just an increase, but uh, people are not paying. The people are supposed to Well, pay. then you, ca you catch those that are not paying, <laughs> but not don't increase the taxation, but uh, put into the, within the net those that are outside the net. Again, the sheriff is in town. Watch your back. But what do you think? Tweet us, like us on Facebook, send us text messages, send us emails. Let us know how you feel. How do we get Nigeria out of these doldrums? How do we get the rich to pay? We thank you most sincerely for watching from Christina Pius. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Have a blessed week ahead.